on. We're doing a series of trainings about closure here in Internet King, but we thought, why don't we share this with you all? Because you care, because you want to learn closure as well, and well, because we can, and because we use closure in default. The whole editor too is closure based. Right now, what is what you're watching? That's just a 10 minute teaser. In fact, we'll show you next a set of a few hours of very good deep dive into closure. You'll love it, you'll like it, and you'll switch to default instantly. Well, at least that's our plan, and we'll see how you behave. Yeah, I mean, Closure is really suitable for this kind of application development um, because, I mean, one of the, one of the things that is really nice is that you've seen me doing this a lot. That I'm working with the connection to the application as it's running, and I can modify code as it's running. And especially if you're developing a, a desktop application that that has lots of user interface elements and and stuff like that, and you maybe have put the application in a particular state to reach that that screen that you're working on and uh, you know it's very very useful to be able to to f work on that and just change how stuff looks and is being laid out by just sort of re re refreshing a function uh, without having to restart uh, a bunch of times um, it's also very suitable for the fact that we're building a kind of a complex application with a, a, a game editor is uh, there's a lot of data that it needs to 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 process and there's a lot of very complex transformations to like binary formats and to something that you'll be viewing on screen and stuff like that. So it, it's it's very suitable for that kind of problem. Um, and I think th the thing about Clojure is that there, there's a bunch of pr functional programming languages and there's a bunch of, of languages that allow you to have this kind of connection to the program as it's running and, and, and use it to to interact with the code that it's running. There's, there's a bunch of that, but there's not really a lot that has this sweet spot of running on the JVM and having access to all the Java stuff, being cross-platform cross because of that. Um, we don't really do a lot of specific things for, for different uh, platforms. We basically develop the editor on Mac OS X, and it, we kind of assume it works on other machines most of the time, and we deal with like specific problems occasionally, but there's not a lot of that sort of thing going around. Um, we already have a bit of an established code base that we could leverage from the old editor the, that was also written in Java. Um, and um, it was really just a good fit for this kind of problem for us. And um, I found personally, I've been working in a bunch of languages and doing this kind of thing for a long time, and I find that for me the combination of having these immutable data structures um, that I can just type and get an instance of an immutable data structure like this. Uh, and the combination of that, the, the powerful data transformation functions, and the live editing just makes it a, a huge amount of fun to work on this on this pro project. It's, it's really it sort of just removes a bunch of the things that would be frustrating with working on a desktop applications. You mentioned cross-platform that you don't do much cross cross-platform things, but can you can you maybe specify a few examples of where you had to do like ex spe specific cross-platform stuff? Well, I mean, there's a, there's there's some differences between the different desktop platforms about like what your expectations would be. Like, uh, for example, in Windows, you have the menu bar in every single window, right? Whereas in Mac OS X, you put the menu bar on on the top, and like there's stuff like that that you might. Uh, be dealing with like maybe maybe some keyboard shortcut doesn't map very well to Windows, and you would uh, occasionally have of course you you you, you would occasionally have like driver issues and and stuff like that where where we would do something and that would we would render something in the viewport and if we render wrong on Windows machines we would just have to debug that on a Windows machine and figure it out but it's not it's not very I mean most of that is abstracted from us we 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 just use a menu bar and it presents in the window if it's on Windows and it presents on the top of the screen if it's a Mac OS X. We do very little consideration for, for Windows specifically. It's mainly just fixing bugs, to be honest. Like if someone reports something on Windows, we, we, we evaluate it on that, but not very much work on it.
Yes. The, the problem is that it will come under a specific data structure, this whole huge graph thing. Uh, yeah. We haven't talked anything about that, but uh, my question is, do you think that it would be, how hard would that be to implement uh, in another language? How much leverage do you get from all this immutability and stuff like that? I mean, I, mean, I, would, I would say that the immutability part is that we couldn't have the graph without the immutability part. The, in, the entire data model is built upon not having values mu mutating or rather being able to have a persistent history of stuff that we can refer to and go back and, and, and repeat. Um, and it's also very built on the graph is e effectively, effectively the, 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 the default editor uh, evaluates a bunch of functions and produces data. And that dat those data production functions are reliant on not having input data that would have changed from one point to another because the results of these evaluations are cached and kept around so, so we, can, we can sort of say, say work. So I, I th the, uh, for our specific case, we need immutable data structures to do that. that that's part of the, it wouldn't be able to design it without. You, you could do it in, in, a, in a language that allowed mutation but you would have to be very careful to not do mutation anywhere. And the fact that we can produce new data structures from these, uh, like copies of them with variants that we've associated a different value, uh, and we can do that effectively. If you were to re-implement that functionality in, uh, in another language, it would be a lot of work to implement just those data structures with that kind of structural sharing and efficiency. But it's, it's certainly possible, it's just... It sounds like it's an um, easy way to do the Photoshop as for their format because I know they have like very big the whole history is built up on yeah. non mutable yeah. changes and just yeah. okay it's just okay this version has the same thing but this points to a new value so yeah yeah, yeah it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a very nice, I mean, the benefit is that you, 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 you can just disregard a whole lot of surprises if you're, if you're programming with those constraints. It is, it is, you have to sort of rethink how you program, and we will be talking about this in a future session, how you would rethink problems to be able to do them without mutating state. Um, but it really frees up a lot of, you know, worry about, external factors messing with, with your stuff, which is a very nice property. Can you think of a kind of problem where you absolutely wouldn't do closure for a language? You know, if I, if, if I was writing uh, a game engine runtime, I wouldn't do it in closure because, uh, you know, it's that's still one area where I think uh, C is very well suited. I mean, you need a lot of control over memory and resources and you're interacting with a bunch of, of uh, system calls that are C. You also want to mutate stuff. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't necessarily say you need to mutate stuff to write a game in. You could probably write a functional game in. Uh, but, you know, it's, um, it's suited for that. Um, I think maybe something like Rust could be suited for that as well. I haven't really looked at it, but I don't really see any other candidates for that? And I'm kind of a little bit including C++ in that. <laughs> I mean, you can use, you can certainly do good work in that. We have to sort of be very careful about what parts of C++ you use. I think to uh, to get the most out of it. Um, but yes. It if you reverse it, uh, are there any problems you've encountered because you used closure? I think one of the main things, uh, like, it does use a lot of runtime memory because you're, you have all these data structures and um, there's boxed values in them sometimes. And it, I mean, it, just, it uses m more memory. I wouldn't say that it uses a huge amount more memory than a Java application would do. Because I think, I mean, memory-wise, I think Editor 1 and Editor 2 are in the, s in the same ballpark in memory usage. Um, but it's um, it can be a problem. I, w I, w I wouldn't necessarily use it if I wanted to develop an application that I expected to run on a mobile phone. It might not be a good fit for that. 
uh, because it, it does tend to it tends to use a lot of memory like just in case. Effectively, you start up the application and then just sort of like grabs a bunch of available memory, and then it just sort of sips from that huge chunk. So it doesn't actually use that memory. It just sort of like creates garbage in it and then just cleans it up, and then creates garbage in it and cleans it up. Right. So it's more like an efficiency barrier than anything else. Um, but it's only memory hungry, like CPU or disk usage. That that doesn't happen like naturally. Sorry, but the 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 CPU usage or disk usage it, it it doesn't happen like naturally, like memory consumption. It doesn't load. Um, the virtual machine and the language itself. The vir the, vir the virtual machine. Uh, will grab a, a bunch of memory to feel comfortable, but it's grabbing a lot of memory. I mean, if you're running it in a low memory condition, you can actually it can it can go get by with a lot less than it's using, uh, and it will if you tell it to. Like if you tell it to, you can only use like half a gigabyte, then it will make do with that. But it will happily grab four gigabytes if it's available to it. Well, yes. CPU-wise, I know that there's a lot of work that has gone into making sure that the editor doesn't consume pretty much anything if you don't do anything. So yeah. just having the editor idling is pretty much zero. Yeah, it's, it's not going to just sort of do stuff because it's not going to start mining Bitcoin in the background or something just because it can. I mean, it's not going to use resources unnecessarily. But of course, there's stuff that you can do that will use resources. And I, I think one of the big things is it, this: if you're doing a lot of mutation, it will produce more garbage than a, a standard job application because you're throwing away stuff because you're not you know you're not using this anymore um, so the garbage collector has to work a little bit harder maybe uh, but it's very good the garbage collector in Java it's it will happily eat through like six gigabytes of garbage in a second that's fine <laughs> we try to not make it do that but it it will do that so I guess we're running a bit over time, and we'll postpone then all the other questions to the next time, right? So you have motivation to come and ask questions <laughs> and, and hear more from us. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.